have a question. If I mention the European Union, what's the first thing you think of? Probably the first thing that comes to mind are images of Brussels and public buildings, or even pictures of countries as influential as the Federal Republic of Germany or France. Depending on where you're watching this from, you might even think of the United Kingdom, rather than countries such as Lithuania or Slovenia. And indeed, in 2018, a survey was conducted in 26 countries around the world, the results of which indicated that the three most important Union states were, in this order, Germany, France and the United Kingdom. In the fourth position, following quite far behind these countries, was Italy. What these countries all have in common is that they are Western European countries. And the truth is that no matter how much union there appears to be, there is still a very clear line in the sand between those two very different Europes that today make up the European Union. We are talking about perceptions, but also about infrastructure and deep political, social and economic differences. And this is of increasing concern to the other Europe, that is Central and Eastern Europe. While Western European nations are deeply intertwined through energy and transport links, the nations of the three seas remain relatively disconnected from each other. And you will say, so what's this about the nations of the three seas? Well, the Three Seas Initiative is a project that was created precisely to solve all of these problems. Seeing its name, you might think it has something to do with the maritime industry or something to do with seas, right? Well, I'm sorry, but it's nothing like that. The initiative is so named because it links 12 European Union countries located between three different seas. The Baltic Sea to the north, the Black Sea to the southeast, and the Adriatic Sea to the southwest. We are talking about Austria, Bulgaria, Croatia, Slovakia, Slovenia, Estonia, Hungary, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, the Czech Republic, and Romania. It is a movement created in 2015 to carry out projects in three areas – infrastructure, energy and telecommunications. Its objective? To foster economic growth in the whole region. And I can already tell you that, despite being fairly recent, the Three Seas Initiative has given rise to more than one controversy, both inside and outside the European Union. In short, it has the support of the United States, it angers Russia and it worries some EU countries. But where does this project come from? What exactly does it consist of? How far could it really go? And could it perhaps even become a threat to the European Union itself? At least as we know it today. Well, we're going to take a look at that right now. Central Europe's Comeback As we've already mentioned, the Three Seas Initiative unites a whole swathe of countries from Estonia to Bulgaria, and the idea of connecting Northern and Southern Europe is far from new. What has not changed this time is its main promoter, which is none other than Poland. Poland is stronger than at any time since the 17th century, says President Duda, NFP. Andrzej Duda is the president of Poland, the country that together with Croatia has launched the Three Seas Initiative. And you're probably thinking, so why is he talking about the 17th century? Well, this map explains everything. What we see in green is the territory of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. We are talking about a federal state created by the Union of Lublin back in 1569, which reached its peak in the 17th century. For Poland, this was a golden age, something like the 20th century for Hollywood. However, the Commonwealth as such had a very short history. At the end of the 18th century, this territory saw not one, but three partitions between its large neighbours, Austria, Prussia and Russia. As a consequence, both Poland and Lithuania did not become independent again until after the First World War. In 1918, the Second Polish Republic was created, an independent state, but one which was a far cry from the grandeur of the 17th century. And it was precisely then that the idea of recreating the former Commonwealth in one form or another began to take hold. As Donald Trump might have said if he was born in Poland at the time, Znowu uczynić Polskę wielką? Znowu uczynić Polskę wielką. Something like that anyway. I'm so sorry, Poland, on behalf of my pronunciation for your beautiful language. In case your Polish is rusty, like mine certainly is, that was make Poland great again. Although the truth is that in order to make this promise, it did not take a Donald Trump because the Second Polish Republic already had a leader who was fully committed to this message. We are talking about, ugh. Józef Piłsudski. Józef Piłsudski. I'm so sorry, Poland. Piłsudski was the first head of state in 20th century Poland, and his great concern was the pronunciation of his name by foreigners. No, I'm kidding. His great concern was in the East. Initially, the Russian Empire, and later, the Soviet Union. In fact, under Piłsudski's command, Poland fought a two-year war against the future republics of the USSR. And of course, the big question is, what could a country like Poland do to survive? Well, Piłsudski had two proposals. The first option was to break the enemy from within. As you know, that as far as nationalities were concerned, the Russian Empire, and later, the Communist Project, were anything but homogeneous. 
genius. Thus, Piłsudski's idea, which received the name Prometheanism, consisted of promoting anti-Russian and anti-Soviet attitudes among the different peoples that made up the USSR. However, Piłsudski's project that relates most to this video was the so-called Intermarium, which covered the territory that lies between the Baltic, Black and Adriatic Seas. So what would this territory look like to us? Exactly. They are the same countries participating today in the Three Seas Initiative. Intermarium, or Medzimorze, was a political project between the countries located within the territory of the former Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. In this way, Pirudzki intended to create a new core of regional power and to find strength in union, but with Poland as the leading voice. The idea was developed by other Polish politicians in the interwar period, but the truth is that it did not find enough support abroad. It ended up becoming a failed project. But then, why are we talking about it now on visual politic? Well, because for many analysts, Pirudzki's ideas are the clearest antecedent of the Three Seas Initiative. Judge for yourselves. We are talking about the same territory, a certain antagonism with Russia, and a project from which Poland has much to gain. However, there is a very important difference between the Intermarium and the Three Seas Initiative. Pirudzki was thinking about the integration of the countries in the region, with geopolitical and military aspects as the basis of the project. In contrast, the Three Seas Initiative is no longer a project of integration, but of coordination and has much more of an economic background. But wait a minute, because here we have to make a side note. It is true that the new initiative does not make provision for cooperation in military matters, but it is also true that, with the exception of Austria, all the countries of the Three Seas initiatives are also members of NATO. In addition, nine of them are part of a regional regrouping known as the Bucharest Nine. The B9 was created in 2015 at the suggestion of Romania and Poland, and aims to harmonise regional preferences within NATO. In other words, if we combine the Three Seas initiative with the country's membership in NATO and the B9, then what we have is a project much more akin to Porudzki's Intermarry. Now, at this point, I'm sure you still have many questions. What exactly does this initiative entail? Why is Poland so interested in it? And what are the consequences for the region and beyond? If you want to know more, check this out. Connecting Europe In 2015, the presidents of Poland and Croatia agreed to create the Three Seas Initiative. It should be understood that for the time being it is not a new international organisation, but an informal movement. So far, the initiative has held five annual summits, and the sixth will take place in Bulgaria in July 2021. Its main objective is to promote economic growth in the region and reduce the group's energy dependence on Russia. Therefore, its key three project types are transportation, telecommunications and energy. To date, we are talking about 90 projects in various stages of development. For example, one of the projects proposed by Hungary is the so-called North-South Connection. As the name suggests, it consists of creating a transport corridor from Sweden to Greece, passing through Poland, the Czech Republic, Slovakia, Hungary, Croatia, Serbia, Montenegro and Macedonia. And although some of these countries are not even part of the Three Seas Initiative, what matters here is the ultimate goal, to promote connectivity between the North and the South of the Central Eastern Fringe of Europe. In the digital field, we also have very interesting projects and areas as varied as 5G, cybersecurity, and real time monitoring of hydrographic basins. But perhaps the most important sector is energy. If you are regular followers of visual politic, and why would you not be, you are well aware of the issue of energy security in Europe, and you also know what one of its main sources of gas is. Of course, we are referring to. Forty percent of all gas imported by the European Union comes from Russia. As you can see, Russian gas is particularly important for some of the countries of the Three Seas Initiative. This translates to an invaluable geopolitical tool for Moscow. Precisely because of this, countries such as Estonia, Latvia and Croatia are working on the creation of liquefied natural gas terminals that will allow them not to depend on gas pipelines and therefore not on Russian gas. Liquefied natural gas, or LNG, is transported in giant LNG carriers, and the advantage of this system is that it opens up many new import channels. For example, since 2017, Poland has been importing liquefied natural gas from the United States. It all sounds great so far, doesn't it? Well, hold on, because it's time to talk about the main problem with the Three Seas Initiative. And some of the projects, for example, the North-South Corridor, are on hold because it is not at all clear how and when they'll be implemented. And above all, where on earth will the money will come from to finance it? Remember, we are not even talking about a formal agreement. To date, only two of the 90 projects have been completed, and both were national in scope. The solution? In theory, this could be it. 
Polish and Romanian banks established Three Seas Investment Fund, Emerging Europe. The investment fund was created in June 2019 and is the first formal institution created under this initiative. It was initially endowed with 520 million euros, that's 616 million US dollars, a figure that has grown to 1.2 billion or 1.4 billion US dollars at the time of making this video. Of course, it's still a long way off from its first target, which stands at 3 billion euros or 3.6 billion US dollars. The idea is that this fund would finance around 9% of the proposed investments in their first stages. The rest of the financing would have to come from national coffers and European funds, such as the European Investment Bank, the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, and the Connecting Europe facility. Of course, if this fund has served any purpose, it has been to confirm that the 3SI, the 3 Cs initiative, is beginning to arouse interest outside the region. Take a look at this. $300 million for the 3 Cs fund by DFC. 3Cs.eu. Now, why does the United States care so much about it? To what extent does it threaten stability within the European Union? And what does all this have to do with Russia? Check this out. Flood risk. The 3SI, even though it is still very new, is already starting to arouse all kinds of reactions. And this is no small matter. As a whole, the 3SI is made up of 12 of the 27 EU countries, which represents 25% of the EU population and 28% of its territory. What's more, with the exception of Austria, all of these countries have only joined the European Union since 2004. So their history as part of the EU is quite recent. For this reason, the creation of this initiative has been seen by some countries as an attempt to challenge the Europe of the 15, that is, the states that were part of the EU before 2004. This is, so to speak, the other Europe that the European Union welcomes. A Europe very different from the one we are used to. A Europe that is not always comfortable with Brussels. Does this mean we are facing a project that could shake the foundations of the European Union? Well, in fairness, for the time being, it doesn't really appear to be a threat to the European Union, in the short term anyway. At the moment, we are not talking about a formal structure, the packs are still limited in scope, and also, not all countries are aligned in the same direction. For example, Slovakia and the Czech Republic are not yet part of the 3SI investment fund. This is partly explained by their misgivings about Poland and, to a lesser extent, Hungary. In addition, the financing of the projects that are being implemented today depends, on a large extent, to European funds. But wait a minute. This does not mean that this initiative could not have significant consequences in the medium term. The 3SI could help unite the countries of Eastern Europe, push them in the same direction and increase their presence in Brussels. If necessary, the alliance could even be a counterweight or they could limit EU actions. Let's not forget the whole Brexit saga. For example, the 3SI's energy plans clash with Nord Stream 2. We recently told you on Visual Politics that Nord Stream 2 is a pipeline that will soon bring Russian gas to Germany, despite criticism in Central Europe. And this is where another player comes to the fore, the United States. While Russia hopes to hold our European allies hostage with their Nord Stream 2 pipeline, the Three Seas Initiative seeks to counter their malign influence. Adam Kinzinger, US House of Representatives. For Washington, supporting the Three Seas Initiative is a good opportunity to counter Russian influence in the region. So much so that in November 2020, the US House of Representatives unanimously passed a resolution in favor of the 3SI. Not surprisingly, therefore, the project is of concern to Russia, which suspects that their Three Seas could stifle its interests in the region. For example, in the opinion of the Russian ambassador to Estonia, the Three Seas initiative could become an anti-Russian cordon sanitaire. Understand that this side of Europe is much more connected to Washington than has been the case lately in the former Western part of the world. Basically, ex-communist Europe is gaining more and more influence. Its economy is thriving and its political clout is growing. Initiatives like this one, even if they face all kinds of problems getting started, may end up becoming a turning point for the old continent's politics. But at this point, the questions are over to you. Do you know about the Three Seas initiative? Do you think it will be able to carry out all of its projects? Do you think it could even become a threat to the European Union? You can leave your answers in the comments below. And if you found this video interesting, don't forget to like, hit the little bell down there, and subscribe to Visual Politics. Take care, and I'll see you next time.